to our channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my favorite spinach artichoke dip. So there's a couple of odd ingredients that you uh, might not have on hand or might not have used to make your spinach artichoke dip, but they really, really make the difference in mine. So that is half and half. Um, I'll just go down the line of everything we need. So we need half and half, some mayo, sea salt, garlic salt, you can use garlic powder, but I really, really love the tang of garlic salt. Um, ground black pepper, onion powder, two cans of 12 ounce artichoke hearts. These need to be marinated and quartered. Some elephant garlic. You can use whatever garlic you want. I just had elephant garlic on hand. Of course, a stick of butter. <laughs> you don't need your coffee, but I do. So I have my coffee. Um, spinach, that is, you can use fresh or frozen. I just used frozen chopped spinach. You need two thingies of cream cheese. What are these thingies called? Two packages of cream cheese. You need some Parmesan cheese. And I actually have some fresh parm that I kind of want to use. So I love to keep things fresh. Oh, my poopy's crying. I love to keep things fresh when you can. So um, this works. You probably have this in your pantry right now, but I had this and it's the um, freshly shaved parmesan. So we're kind of going to incorporate the two and see what we can get going there. So the first things first, I already chopped um, one bowl or one clove of elephant garlic. It was like that big. It was huge. So I think that would equate to like maybe two and a half regular cloves of garlic. I'm not sure, but it doesn't need to be over garlicky. This is a dish that you can just kind of taste test until you get it right. Um, but you know, right is relative. It's really whatever you like. I like a really nice salty, creamy, um, tangy artichoke dip. And also, that begins. You feel me? You gotta have the chips. You gotta have the scoop. So first, I'm going to start melting my stick of butter on medium. You don't need this to brown. While that's melting, I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I need my husband for this part. Ugh. I need to chop these artichokes. Babe! Need you. I need your man's strength. <laughs> yeah, I need to open this. So you're going to chop up your artichokes while that is melting, and then you're going to put the spinach and the artichokes in the pan and get those going. You need to have another bowl handy, so when that is finished cooking and there's um, they're all warm and it's not frozen, you can just put it to the side so we can start on the creamy ingredients. One man's strength coming up. I need you to open these two. Golly. What two? Mm. Yeah, these two. They don't want to win. Mm -hmm. They do not want to win. Look at this. Why did that make sense? Jesus, hold up. Mm-hmm. Oh, Put this kind of on that. Wow. Jesus. <gasps> like this coffee just hits you. You want down one to go? Thank you. Okay, we'll there you go, mom's. Thank you, baby. There you go. Love you. you Alrighty, so I'm going to drain these. You don't need to rinse them. You just don't need all of the juice. It's heavily uh -huh. marinated, and everyone knows. I mean, I don't know if you know. I feel like everyone knows the artichoke hearts that are canned like this are really salty, like really, really salty. So you just need the meat. So you're just gonna chop those up. You don't need to be fine. You just kind of need like a nice rough chop. You do need to use all of them, so this actually might take way longer than I expected, but that's okay. Sidebar, I love making this for the holidays. I love making this for just because, like for the heck of it, but this is so good for the holidays, and I love hearing when people take their first bite and they're like, oh my gosh, how did you make this? This is better than Applebee's. <laughs> I know. Kendall, what do you mean? Okay, this is what I'm talking about. You just need a nice, coarse cut right here. And I'm gonna go check on that butter. See how it's melting. Y'all, this is gonna be so good, oh my God. All right, let's check on the butter. We're doing great, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna start putting our artichokes in. These are already cooked, so you don't really need them to stay in there that long. The point of this is really just to kind of saute the spinach and get the flavors incorporated. After you put um, both your artichokes in, you're going to add your elephant garlic. 
The reason we didn't saute the garlic first is because I didn't want the garlic to brown. I want the flavor of the garlic, and I don't want any color of it. Does that make sense? Like, you know, when you, it's very easy to overcook garlic, in my experience, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, but I want to just put it in so the flavors can seep out into the whole dish instead of like cooking it and worrying about it being like almost burnt. Packages of cream cheese. If you just want to make maybe like you're serving five to six people, I would just like half this recipe. But I like to make a lot. There's always someone who comes over and goes through any dessert I make, any leftovers we have. Someone is always here eating it up. So it's worth it for me and my experience with my family to make more than it is to make less. 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 <laughs> the coffee up and make it. Okay, I can hear the artichokes cooking. I think this is good. Let's put these in and get our spinach in. Yeah, this looks great. So with the garlic salt and all the seasonings, what I mean by to taste is, everything we're adding in here has a pretty strong flavor. So as you add another element, another layer of flavor, you want to taste it. To make sure, you good? <laughs> to make sure you're not adding too much because, like I always say, you can add more, but you can't take it out. So I have learned that the hard way. Okay, so I'm just gonna open up the spinach, throw it in there. Put it up to the four and add one or two. Two scoops for four ounces. She hungry. Yeah. And they're going crazy. I'm going crazy, crazy. I literally crazy. just better. Me too. She's my daughter. All right, let's get this in there. I think I want to do for the holiday holidays, like Christmas and maybe New Year's, um, an appetizer series. Because I feel like, in my experience, that is probably the hardest thing to get right is the hors d'oeuvres. I'm gonna throw this healthy garlic in there. Getting your hors d'oeuvres right, you never know um, how to please a crowd. You don't know what people are allergic to. You don't know what people like. Like my husband hates creamy things, so he's honestly probably not gonna eat this, but everyone else will. Um, but I kinda wanna do like maybe some finger foods, things that the kids will like. My husband is um, a sibling of nine. And there are a lot of children around us all the time. So I'm constantly trying to figure out what is something that they would like. But then, you know, they've got parents. Then we've got older siblings here. And then you've got husbands and wives and friends and cousins and sisters. And trying to please everyone's really hard. So comment down below if you guys would like to see an appetizer or hors d'oeuvre series from me this holiday season. All right, everything's incorporated. I'm going to crank the heat to high. Let that cook down. Once I start hearing it sizzle a little bit, um, I'm gonna take it out into our other little dish and then start working on the creamy element of this dish. So let me clean up, get my surface ready, and I will catch you guys at the next step. Boy, just hand it over. Talking about your love, I can't get enough of it. Can't wish I was so and I know you're tired of me How you fuck with me, at least I'm honest Something you need to get over Kinda miss the feeling that I get when I'm on my way over So boy, just hang it up Cause you know I need your love I can't get enough of it You guys hear that? <laughs> Not KK, this The sizzle, the crackle, that's exactly what we're looking for so once you reach this point, this stage in the cooking, you're just gonna pour it out into another dish. I'm not gonna lie, I suck at this. This feels like a lot of pressure. You guys are watching me. Okay. Oh Lord, have mercy. All right, we got it. Oh Lord. See? Oh my gosh. You're making me nervous. I'm just gonna 
do this one by one. I just figured it was going to take too long doing that, but I think it's not that much, so we're good. It's just such an awkward handle. Okay, we got it. All right, so I'm going to rinse my pot out and start working on the cream. I'm going to rinse it out. Um, you don't have to. I just like, I don't know, I'm just like weirdly OCD at certain times. So I'm going to rinse this out because I don't want any green specks in the cream until we fully incorporate it. So this is beautiful. My sink is doing this crazy annoying thing lately, and I don't know what's up with it. That will arrive. Alrighty. I think this is fine. So for this stage, this is so messy, y'all, sorry. For this stage, you need to get out your half and half. And I'm not measuring this at all, honestly. If I felt like you needed to, then I would have. But you really, like, you don't even have to have any formal cooking experience for this dish. So you can literally eyeball this, even if you're not used to eyeballing anything. So you just need to get the two packs of cream cheese. Go ahead and put that in your bowl. Then we're gonna do the half and half. Now with the half and half, the way you eyeball this is, you need maybe like, how do I explain it? I'll show you. <laughs> so you just wanna put enough in to melt the um, cream cheese so when that gets hot, like I don't know, does that make sense? It's really not difficult, but maybe it's cause I do it all the time. And you just need like, just a couple just, you know, devs. But you can use more or less. It's one of those things, like if you add too little flour, you can add some more. So I start off with a little bit. And um, if it's not as runny, and if it's too thick, then you can always add more heavy cream. Or half and half, or whatever. So to that, we're gonna add our seasoning. So you need your black pepper, your garlic salt, your onion powder, and your regular salt. And your Some people like to do Italian seasoning, I think that does take it somewhere else, but um, no, I just want to keep it classic and I don't think that, that was necessary for this one. Okay, so get your onion powder. You can do about a tablespoon if you have to measure it. This is new, so I need to take this wrapper off. You guys know how I am for our heart, our suck. Alright, so garlic salt is not garlic powder. Garlic powder has no flavor it's just it has flavor it just doesn't have any salt to it this is strong so you need like a couple pinches y'all it's like maybe one i'm starting with one because i've definitely overdone the garlic salt before and it's nasty okay so get your pepper going maybe a teaspoon half a teaspoon whatever however spicy you want it to be then you're going to put your mayo in so you can do a half a cup of mayo you can start with that if you like more mayo if you like it less then you can do that too can you tell? Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna do a half a cup at first. Plus some for good luck. Add my salt, just a dash. Boop. Two. And then, am I missing anything? Am I, I think, wait. My parm. Okay, so for the parm, you don't need it right now um, because the cheese is gonna melt pretty fast. So first, just get everything incorporated and then let the parm be the last thing that you put in. All right, we're gonna let that melt, and then I'm gonna get a dish to put it in because this is the real secret, and I say that all the time, but like the real secret to this dish is you're gonna bake it. The reason you bake it is because it does this bubbly thing in the oven. Oh my God, I don't even know. Like, it just does some magic in there. So we just put it in there and we let the oven and the food do its thing, and it happens, and it's amazing. And also you're gonna sprinkle some of the shaved parm over the top of it. And that's gonna caramelize and bubble and get a little bit brown and do a thingy little thing. And then
then it looks perfect and it's amazing. So it just takes it up a notch from just melting everything to, oh snap, now we've cooked it. So this is what I mean by too thick. At this point, personally, I would add some more um, heavy cream, but this is why you add it little by little. So just keep adding a little bit until you get the consistency that you like. And the cream cheese hasn't fully melted, but I already know that it's gonna be too thick because there's still a couple big chunks left to be melted. But it's looking good and smelling amazing. I can already tell I'm going to need a little bit more salt. I don't know. I think my nose is so <laughs> advanced. I don't know if that's the word. But I can smell every seasoning that I put in there. I can smell if I'm going to need more. Like, I can just feel it. Like, mm, I still need some more. I'm just really in tune with my food. You see how I'm, I'm like the food whisperer. Okay, that's bold. Maybe I should call myself the food whisperer. Sound like that. All right, this is getting good. I'm going to crank this heat up just a little bit. Now we're getting into the high range, and you're gonna keep whisking it so it doesn't burn at the bottom of the pan, especially if you don't have nonstick pans. You can add more butter to this if you'd like. We did add a whole stick in here, so you really don't need it, but it's just a little preference. All right, come look at this. That's what we're looking for. So th this is kind of the stage where I would start testing it. Just get a little on a spoon and see. It doesn't need to be too salty because keep in mind this little mixture that we have over here with the spinach and the artichoke and the garlic um, has a lot. It carries a big, big, big punch. So you want this to have some flavor, but it does not need to be as salty as that because once you mix the two plus the parm cheese, it's just going to be amazing. Oh my gosh. You know what I would do to this though? This is extra, and we're not going to do it, and you don't have to do it, but I would add bacon. I know, that's a lot. It just sounds so good. Okay, I'm going to turn this down, because this is looking great. And we're going to taste it. I'm going to get a little spoon. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Let me see. Pretty sure I don't have this. Okay, I'm not gonna do it this time. But next time, because I personally love this ingredient, you can use Greek yogurt or sour cream if you like that extra tanginess. My husband hates it. Anything white and creamy and yogurty and oh, you can't stand it. So they probably don't hate this, but everyone else loves it. But I would definitely do. I love that fermented flavor that Greek yogurt and sour cream has. So I would add maybe like a half a cup of that. Should I do it? I do have Greek yogurt. Oh my God, I do it. This is the struggle that I face every day in the kitchen. I'm like, should I add this? Should I do it? <laughs> All right. So this is the perfect time to put your mixture of veggies into the cream. We're just going to stir it bit by bit. Okay, y'all, come on now. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. Are you kidding me? You can even add some lemon juice in here if you want. This flavor profile is just, you want tang, you want salt, you want a bite, you want cream. Those are all the elements you want in a perfect spinach and artichoke dip. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna start adding in some parm. We're gonna save the shaped parm for the top, but you can go ahead and add like a half a cup to a cup into the mixture. It's about a half a cup right there. We'll do a little more than a half. The way I can tell if it's enough is if I can see the parm every time I stir it in every side of the dish. You should see a little bit, no matter which way you cut the cookie. Family. I think that's enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven because of course I didn't do it before. You're just gonna do it to, I'm gonna do it to 400. You can do it to 350 if you want. 
I like 400 because it gets the job done. It's already cooked. You can even do it to broil if you want, which is probably, I'm honestly just going to crank it up to broil. I think broil is um, 500, so yeah, that should be fine. Because you just want the top, like everything else is done, you just want the top to be bubbly and cheesy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to clean up my space, and then we're going to transfer this into this dish, sprinkle the shaved parm, pop it in, and then wait, and then we're good. So let me clean up, and then I'll catch you guys in the next step. Produced by D. You know what I want. I want to keep it real. Tell me just how we feel. I don't ask for much. Okay, my kitchen is clean. I am way more at peace. And now I'm ready to pour the spinach artichoke dip into our dish, sprinkle in some cheese, pop it in the oven. I did actually decide to turn the oven on to broil instead of 400. So let's go ahead and do that. I feel like broil on high is just quicker. And instead of letting it burn, you put it at the bottom so it does a little convectional thing. And then on top, you get that bubbly crispy brown moment that we want to have in here. So I just feel like it's a lot quicker. All right, let's get this in there. I kind of want to pour it, but you guys saw how that went. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Even when I try to keep it clean, I just can't. So we're just gonna... cheese okay so we're just gonna sprinkle the cheese and kind of dot it around you don't need an even layer because you still want some of that green and those pops of color um, to come through that's kind of what makes the dish you, if you just cover it it's just gonna look white completely so you want some Heavy moments over here, some scarce over here. Just kind of want to stagger it around. There you go. And also putting this on top is going to create a thing where you take the, the dip, I mean, the, what is the chip? You take the chip and you put it um, in the dip and you get that cheese pull. And so we love cheese pulls. All right, let's go ahead and pop it in. We're going to let it cook for a little. Keep your eye on it because it is on broil. If you decide to do the 400, just um, do it for maybe about 10 minutes. So keep it on it. I'm gonna, I always say this, but I'm going to clean my kitchen fully now. And then we're going to take it out, let everyone come out and try it, and get everyone's honest opinion of what I feel is the best spinach and artichoke dip. Tell me, if I told you nothing but lies, would you still love me? If I shake an ass at the club on some other guy If you call me up in the morning But you heard his voice on the phone Would you still want me if I tried? The food is ready and Bernard is clearly ready too if you want some Not gonna happen, sorry I love you though Love you all right, this is exactly what you're looking for, you guys, the caramelization of the Parmesan cheese. That's why we did it with the shredded ones instead of the grated. Looks beautiful, but you still get those pops of color seeping through. It looks amazing. It smells beautiful. All right, let's get these chips off with honey. You want to try some first? All right, come on. Schnitzel. Look at the schnitzel. She feels like she owns the couch. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me get back for more. No. No, baby. I love you. I love you. All right. All right. Let's give it the first test. It's so hot, so you're definitely going to have to. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to pull it. I'm struggling, huh? I am. It's hot. You sure you want to burn your mouth? No, I'm gonna burn my okay. mouth. What you mean? <laughs> Are you what? Sorry, you should try. Is it hot, hot? 
It was hot. It was hot? Really? Should we eat? That was good. Stop! That was good. Stop! That was good. Stop. What's up? She's not ready yet. She's been acting a fool. Really? She's been crying, screaming. Aww. We done did everything. Mmm. That's good, bro. That's so bad. Mmm. Like oh, I love it. Okay. We're gonna be snacking on this for the rest of the night. Oh, this is really good. Now, I know you guys don't like when I over season, but I'm probably gonna add a little bit more salt to mine. <laughs> But it is perfectly seasoned. It's just a personal preference. I like things on the sodium side, so I would probably do a little bit more garlic salt. But yeah, this is amazing. It's classic. We do this every year. So definitely going to do this for Thanksgiving. Probably do a rendition of this for Christmas. Carry it into New Year's. And then that's going to be the end of our spinach artichoke until the next holiday season. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Comment down below if you guys tried this out. And subscribe to our channel. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>